Hello and welcome back to the Watford Way. Today, as we look ahead to Watford versus Blackburn Rovers at Vicarage Road. But before we dive into our opposition preview, I think it's right and justified that we take a brief look back at the past seven or so days for Watford. And that includes our two away fixtures, one against Luton and one against Leeds. And unfortunately, two more defeats on the road. One of them was a 3-0 defeat, of course, to Luton Town on Derby Day. And the other one was a more valiant, positive effort, especially in the second half against Leeds United. And I think we'll focus on the Leeds game as that was the most recent fixture that has been played. Uh, and I just think it's a shame, actually, that we could have come away with a point or potentially more if it wasn't for them two Daniel Batman clangers. Um, I think for me personally, I'm looking at Daniel Batman from a more broader uh, perspective just generally. Um, and I don't think it's right he continues to stay in the team, not just because of his on-field performances, but also from actually a mental health perspective, because if you looked at social media over the past week, two weeks, um, or even, you know, the past year, really, Daniel Batman has been getting quite a lot of criticism, which has been warranted at times for his on-field performances. But I think in the last week or two, we've gone from constructive criticism uh, to potentially more abusive language towards Batman. Now, as much as his on-the-field performances haven't been up to the quality we need to, you know, get higher up in the table, um, I don't think it's right that fans, uh, or certain fans, I should say, it's a small minority of fans, I don't think it's right they um, abuse Daniel Batman in a way that is personally kind of attacking his... Um, you know, just overall integrity as as a person, really. So um, whilst, yes, we can criticise his, his on-the-field performances, and I think uh, against Leeds, clearly, he, he really struggled to deal with, with the pressure of the whole situation. Um, I, I do think we need to take a step back sometimes and remember that, uh, you know, Watford players, whilst they're paid, you know, a substantial amount of money to play professional football, uh, they are still humans at the end of the day. So uh, if it was me personally and I was a manager, um, I think I would actually take Backman out of the team for a period of time. I don't think Jonathan Bond did anything particularly wrong uh, to have warranted him dropping out of the team. And I think Backman, since his comeback, has caused no ends of controversy, unfortunately, uh, within the Watford fan base. And for his own well-being and his own mental health, um, I would take him out of the team. But of course, I'm not there on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know what discussions are being had. I don't know what's being said. I don't know Dan personally myself, so I can't um, attest for how he's feeling currently. But from the outside looking in, that seems to be the current situation for me. I think uh, a positive we can take out of Leeds is that we saw quite a heavy rotation of the players that were in the squad. I thought Tom Ince had a really, really good game. I thought Francisco Sierra coming back in looked really promising as well. And I thought Festia Baselli and Quagwe Bar kind of down that right hand side had a really uh, promising partnership too. So I think there were positives to take away from Leeds. Obviously Quagwe Bar getting his goal as well, his second goal of this championship season. Um, but as I said earlier, it's just a shame that because of two errors, Watford ultimately come away uh, with nothing from Ellen Road. But we certainly saw a response in that second half. Uh, I would go as far to say Watford were probably the better team in the second half against Leeds, um, who I'm backing to get promoted back to the Premier League, which shows really how good we were, or maybe alternatively how poor Leeds were, because they did struggle to put away their chances at times. But yeah, Luton, really disappointing. I was quite angry actually after that game. Uh, whereas Leeds, first half, not so great. Second half, much improved. So before we get into my thoughts on Watford's opposition for the weekend, I think it's right we hear from an opposition fan ourselves to see what they're thinking ahead of the fixture. So I'm delighted to welcome Ryan Hildred from the Lancashire Post on the channel to give his thoughts ahead of this weekend's clash at Vicarage Road. Hi there, it's Ryan Hildred from the Arte Labore podcast uh, through the Lancashire Telegraph, just recording a preview video for your channel before the game against you guys on Saturday. Recording this just fresh off our 0-0 draw at home to West Brom, which in the end has turned out to be 
a really spirited point for us. Um, we'd obviously just had the five wins from five at home for the first time since the 94-95 season and a pretty good start to the season for us, particularly at home. But uh, alas, it's come to an end tonight with, with the draw, but very happy with a draw at home to West Brom given how good they are and obviously they're up there this season as well. Um, looking at Watford and, and obviously the preview for that game, um, just a bit of bad news for Rovers tonight. Hayden Carter has gone off with an injury tonight. Um, looks a fairly serious one for him. Uh, I think it's a hamstring, so could be a hamstring injury, which is a few weeks out for him. So that's definitely going to be a big blow for Rovers going into that game. Um, Carter and Dom Hyam at the back have, have been quite a formidable centre-back pairing for us this season, particularly at home. So uh, he's going to be a miss. So it'll be Danny Bart who comes in for Hayden Carter at Vicarage Road on Saturday. And to be fair to Danny Bart, he's done well for us this season as well. We picked him up on a free transfer in the summer uh, and he's got himself a goal as well. So um, Danny Bart should slot fairly seamlessly alongside um, Dom Hyam uh, at centre-back on Saturday. My thoughts on Watford, um, just looking at your results this season, you know, you're very similar to Rovers in terms of the home form being pretty strong uh, and obviously not so good away from home. That's how Rovers have been really this season. Um, we picked up a couple of points on the road um, away at Norwich, which was, which was a last gasp equaliser for us in a 2-2 draw. And then a really spirited draw with 10 men away at Burnley in our local derby as well. So they've been the high points away from home, I'd say. It's then been fairly indifferent since that point. Um, we had a nil-nil draw away at Preston with 10 men, uh, where we should have done much more to hurt them because they played a whole half with 10 men. So we should have done more. And, and actually, Preston probably had the better chances in that game in that other local derby for us. And then two really disappointing championship results in our last away games before the international break. Uh, away at Coventry, where we just did not lay a glove on Coventry at all and succumbed to a 3-0 defeat there, which was fairly embarrassing for us on the night as well. Just a, a really poor one from us. And then just before the international break, another poor performance away at Plymouth, but it looked like we'd grabbed an equaliser right at the end. But with the very last kick of the game, 97th minute equaliser for Plymouth as well so there's certainly some improvement um, that we need to do on the road this season um, it's fairly chalk and cheese in terms of our home form versus our away form so I'd say Watford fans should be going into this feeling confident especially when you do layer on your home form as well you know it's probably how Rovers fans would be feeling if Watford were turning up at Ewood Park this Saturday with how we've both started at home um, you know you've got to fancy yourself at home haven't you um, so yeah, um, and in terms of Watford in general, they're just always a side that you never know what you're going to get with Watford. Um, obviously, you've got lots of players from lots of different countries and some players who I've never heard of before. And last season, you absolutely destroyed us in that game at Ewood Park with the five subs that you were able to make in that game. Um, I was particularly impressed with Chat Tadze in that game, who just had the, the running of the middle of the park, it seemed, at Ewood Park in that game in December, I think it was. And He's obviously started with you guys this season as well and, and started pretty well. So Chak Vitadze is going to be someone I'm going to be looking out for on Saturday. And I'm going to the game on Saturday as well. So it'll be nice for me to be at Vicarage Road again. Um, players to watch out for for Rovers um, up front. Um, we're a bit of an unknown quantity this season uh, as well with, with in comparison to some of the guys you've got. So Yuki Ahashi. Uh, is a striker that we've picked up from the Japanese J-League. Um, really, really unknown quantity, but he's chipped in with five goals this season and someone who's really dynamic, can run the channels, doesn't give you a break as a centre-back and he's got a finish in him as well. Um, he's banged a couple in the top corner this season. And then we've got someone who's a bit more, um, if you think Paolo one-shot back in the day in the 90s, Someone like that in Maktar Gay up front. Um, sometimes he doesn't know what he's doing on the football pitch, but his hold-up play, his first touch, and his ability to link up the play and bring others in is absolutely fantastic. It's everything really that follows from that point where it lets him down a little bit. So his finishing and some of the care and attention that you need as a striker, it can be that that's lacking. So certainly look out for... Uh, Ohashi and Maktar Gay this Saturday. 
Uh, Todd Cantwell's the other one, um, you know, a fairly obvious one to say, but, you know, a, a bit of a coup for Rovers in the summer, picking him up from Rangers. And it took him a while to ease in in terms of the fitness because um, we signed him right at the end of the transfer window. But he's been a more regular starter now. So started the game against Swansea last Saturday, started again tonight against West Brom. So he's going to be someone starting more and more in the game so Todd Cantwell on his day and as he's already proven for Rovers he's got an assist he's got um, just something different in his pocket so if the game is tight or Rovers are needing to raise it you know expect Todd Cantwell to be having an impact on the pitch that's for sure uh, and then someone else to look out for is Owen Beck um, he's a loney that we've got from Liverpool um, he's at left back and he's done really well to oust Harry Pickering from our side because Harry Pickering has been someone who's been fairly constant and available over these last three seasons. But Owen Beck has really come in this season, challenged Harry Pickering and, and really taking his place now with, you know, some fairly dogged defensive displays at left back, but also a crucial ability to go forward, which is not what we've seen from Harry Pickering really. So I expect Owen Beck to get down that left-hand side as well in the game. So, yeah, Rovers have started pretty well this season. We're really happy with the start, you know, being in and around that top six. Um, it was going to be a season of transition for us, losing Sammy Smodix, as, as, of course, with uh, with him being the top scorer last season and, and not really knowing who we're bringing in. And, you know, Maktar Gay and Yuki Ahashi, they were never going to replace the goals of Sammy Smodix. But... It's been good for us to share the goals around the team and, and really take it to another level this season without Sammy Smodic. So it's been a nice surprise for us to be in and around that top six and make the start that we have. But for us to sustain anything like that this season in terms of league position, we do have to sort that away form out because we can't be relying on not being beaten at home because we will eventually be beaten at home. You know, Law of Averages says that. So we do need to pick up more points on the road. So we'll be looking at Watford on Saturday as an opportunity to do that. But make no mistake, we know it's going to be a tough game with, you know, the unknown quantity that Watford can bring and, and obviously the, the good start you've had at home as well. If you're going to push me for a prediction... I fancy Rovers to grind out a draw. I think Watford do deserve the respect in this fixture on Saturday, but I think Rovers are desperate for a more positive result on the road because, as I say, these last three have not been great for Rovers on the road, so we do need to give the fans something to shout about and maybe we can just spot an opportunity to take advantage of Watford in what's been a really tough week for you, obviously, with your game against Luton. You know, I won't repeat the result and then following that up with that tough game at Leeds as well. You know, that's not been an easy game week for Watford, so hopefully we can just catch a cold a little bit on the, the back of a difficult week for you. But um, yeah, I think a draw. Um, thanks for listening and see you all soon. A massive thank you to Ryan for his contribution to the video. Some very insightful thoughts about Blackburn there. And actually, during my brief bit of research for the video today, I was shocked to find out actually how high Blackburn were in the league table. They've kind of gone completely under the radar for me so far this season. I've not watched any Blackburn games at all thus far. And to see themselves up within the playoff positions, uh, I found quite shocking actually. So fair play to them. What I would say though on their position is it may be slightly false. Now, of course, you earn every single championship victory you can get. But looking at their past fixtures, they do seem to be against a lower level of opposition, the likes of Derby and, and Oxford United, for example. So uh, I think when Blackburn potentially come up against some tougher opponents, like Watford, hopefully uh, on Saturday, um, I think we'll, we'll start to see that the real Blackburn come out. But fair play to them in, in the fixtures they've had so far. It seems like they've done pretty well. Uh, not overly convincing victories. They, they still seem to be conceding uh, quite a few goals defensively, but largely um, they've done pretty well so far this season. They seem to have exceeded my expectations entirely because as I said earlier, I did not expect to see them so high in the table. Right, before we get into my score prediction, I think it's right you take a look at the latest Watford injury news. And unfortunately, it's not fantastic. It could be much worse, of course. We've seen much worse in recent seasons. But Angelo Ogbonna is set to be out for a period up to two months. Six to eight weeks is the current timeline on Angelo Ogbonna's injury. He picked up a hamstring issue after the looting game. It's been assessed and Tom Clubby has come out and said it could be a six to eight week absence, which... 
Uh, it's really disappointing, actually. I'm absolutely gutted. He's looked really good uh, since he's come into the side. And for him to be out, um, well, up until Christmas now, really, is potentially uh, a really big blow for Watford defensively. The good news is Kevin Caben, our new centre-back signing, is set to return very, very shortly. Not quite in time for the Blackburn game. And the same can be said for Jeremy Ngakia as well. But both of them should be available for the next game after Blackburn, which I believe uh, is Sheffield Wednesday away next weekend. And then the last injury issue is for Tom Deli Bashiru, who again, post Luton, we seem to have suffered quite a lot in that Luton game, uh, isn't available due to a kind of a reoccurrence of a knee injury that's been plaguing him uh, for a few weeks now. So Tom Deli Bashiru doesn't seem too long term, but Tom Cleverley has confirmed that he will miss this Blackburn game as well. In terms of my score prediction, uh, I've got to be positive. I've got to be bold. It's 11 games unbeaten at Vicarage Road under Tom Cleverley. And I'm hoping we can make that 12 on Saturday. So I'm going to go with a comfortable 2-0 Watford victory. Uh, and I'll go Quadwo Bar at the double. I think the scenes would be great if that happened. Um, so yeah, I'll go Quadwo Bar to get two goals in this game. And hopefully he'll start as our number nine up front because I do think he can suit that position really, really well. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe down below, leave a like on the video and let me know your score predictions in the comments. We'll be back after Blackburn with our match reaction. Bye-bye.